in Terre Haute, Indiana, this man, clerk at a ceramic store, becomes victim four. He smelled good and he, he gave great hugs. I miss those hugs. He was just the best big brother. Good man. Couldn't have been any better. And how it could happen to somebody like him is just awful. I was watching the, the evening news and the reporters came on the screen and said there in front of my mother's ceramic shop, the big sign that said Sylvia's Ceramics. They said, there's been a male body found inside the shop. And that's how we found out. And I started screaming and screaming. We drove down here, mother beat us. And she looked up at me like her whole world had ended and said, they shot him in the back of the head. not have a ponytail. Uh, however, he was smaller, he was tall, but he was of smaller build. If you consider all females in these other cases, and being a pottery store named Sylvius, yeah. he may have assumed a female was gonna be inside. And when he realized it was a male, um, I think he probably was concerned about a struggle ensuing if he didn't shoot him there. It was honestly cold early on, even though they continued to look for witnesses and talk to people, they really didn't gain any steam at all. They accused all of us of terrible things, of maybe we were the ones that did it, or, or I was the one that did it, or one of his friends. It was so unreal. Usually they have us in that spectrum, you know, almost immediately. It's like somebody close to him or whatever. And um, they couldn't figure it out. This guy obviously did more than one killing, and all of those killings were at odd times. And when you consider the times of day, there are times when people are out and about. And every serial killer has a certain quirk. And I think his quirk is that he got off on the fact that people were basically right there and he was doing something that heinous and getting away with it. Sure, I'd like to see him punished, but there's no closure. Nothing will bring him back. That's all you really want. You want him to never be gone. Just because there are so many different articles available in the different cases that likely have his DNA on them. Uh, if there's not DNA in our case, there's going to be in another case. And if it's not in that case, it's going to be in another case. I really believe that there's going to be a DNA match somewhere uh, to someone. It's awful. Sorry. If they could just, if they could finally catch him. I gave up so long ago, but I have a little hope now. I got a little hope again.
The clerk at this novelty store in Raytown, Missouri was killed too, like all the others, shot execution style in the back of the store. My shop was over here and uh, it ran a pretty good length of this side and it's all chopped up now. He was right, uh, it was right here on the very end and that was the door that the guy came out of. We have uh, pretty decent witnesses in at least two of the five locations. I happen to glance up and I see a gentleman coming across the parking lot. He was right about 50 yards out, 75 yards out, and it was a really nice day like today, and he had on a sports coat. And I thought, wow, that's weird. You don't really see a guy dressed up that much in a sports coat. That's why it kind of shocked me, and he was walking. He was walking this way, and I went, huh, that's kind of neat, you know? And he looks kind of, you know, dapper. And so I went back to looking at my manual, and. And I look up and he had come across the parking lot and had stepped right in front of the door right there. And he stepped up on the curb. I looked at him and he looked at me. And now when I think back on it, I think he was a little bit shocked because if he was scoping the area just 30 minutes before, there were two women there. He looked kind of shocked and I kind of, you know, you know just looking at the guy in the face for a second. And uh, he immediately turned left and took off across the sidewalk. Just a familiarity of the area, you know, it makes you wonder if, you know, what brought them over a little bit farther out, you know, comfort, do they know somebody? I mean, you really can't pinpoint any really reasoning behind it right now at all. You know, I just always, I always, in my mind, wondered if, if that was him. I was eating here in this strip center with a friend of mine at the restaurant at the other end here. And I remember a guy walking in, just kind of scanning the restaurant. And a waitress walked by and said, just sit anywhere. And he, he didn't acknowledge her, he just, looked and then he left. It was chilling, I mean, because I remember just having an odd feeling about the guy anyway. And so I'm working on the TV and all of a sudden I about, maybe two or three minutes later, I hear pop and I went, that sounded like a gunshot said nah you know how you kind of say to say to yourself I can't be it but so to say the truth I don't know if I've ever told this before but I grabbed my 38 and I had it behind my back and I jumped through the, the cutout and I went to the front door and I opened the door and as soon as I looked out the guy I saw in the parking lot was the door her door was closing and he was going around the corner because his back was to me when I opened the door and looked out, her door was closing and he was whipping around the corner of the building. And it was the same guy I'd seen over here, same clothes, same pants, everything. So I jumped back over the counter and I ran to the back door and my back door would open into the alley back there. And I threw open the door and I looked both ways and he was gone. Well then that really concerned me. So I ran back the other way, grabbed the, my, my phone went next door and called for Sarah. And then I saw her feet sticking out. I didn't go any further. Uh, I'm sorry, it still bothers me. And so I had my phone in my hand, I called the cops. That's the hard thing, you know, with investigations. You're investigating crime, not a person, and then you have to find the person. Then a true investigation can start. It's bothered me for years. I mean, I feel like I didn't act fast enough. 
if I'd have not waited so long and that they might have caught him. But yeah, I, I you know, cases are getting solved every day through new DNA and new technology. I, I hope there's a resolution to it. I would like that. I would like to have it for myself. Nancy Kitzmiller was shot to death in May of 92 at the Boot Village store in St. Charles. Execution style in the back of her head with a 22 caliber pistol. She wasn't even supposed to be at work that day. She was filling in for another employee. I'd be lying to you if I told you I don't think about this case all the time. I think that he's a coward. I think he is um, a horrible person. It was now or never is how we looked at it. Looking for people who would have had an opportunity to commit the crime. We had Kevin Costner's name. Uh, we were that thorough. There's no crime that is, you know, perfect. The, the killer made a mistake. The memory of that day stays with us, you know, it's fresh every day, so to speak. And we think about Nancy a lot. We think about her every day. For almost 30 years, we've never stopped working on it. Uh, we've never put it on a shelf, although there were people who wanted us to. I am either doing something or looking at something or reading something on this case every single day that I'm here at work.